Yeah. Uh, so we'll start. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, in last class we saw uh, the normal uh, journal entry and how to create and the other things. So we will see uh, what are the steps that involved uh, to create the foreign currency transaction. Okay. So the first step is to create or uh, have it uh, created uh, as a rate type. So here we have uh, two options, either to create a new one or we can use uh, the uh, existing uh, rate types. Mm -hmm. These are the existing rate types. Uh, so mm -hmm. the standard one is corporate and uh, spot and the user. So mm -hmm. spot is something that uh, we will decide uh, when we are doing the transaction. Mm -hmm. And a user is something that user can give their uh, own rates when they are uh, doing the transaction and uh, we have fixed rate. Uh, so fixed rate is something that uh, we will have this as a fixed for entire quarter, let's say, or year. So mm -hmm. some, uh, something like that will uh, fall in uh, fixed. And corporate yeah. is the standard one that has been followed. Uh, so where we will have uh, standard rates that we will be uploading every month or uh, probably a weekly basis. Mm -hmm. Okay, so these are the different uh, rate types that we have. Mm -hmm. And uh, once we have uh, defined or we have selected our uh, rate type, mm. basically we will have to load our uh, daily rates. Okay. Mm. So here in this space, uh, uh, one thing is that we will not be able to uh, load it manually. So we will have to use the Excel sheet. Right, right. Okay. So for this uh, rate type, if we see, so it is already uh, loaded. Mm. That is from uh, USD to uh, Euro. They have already loaded. So if you see here, so I'll not be able to uh, lo load it manually. I will not have uh, addition button. Yeah. Mm. So uh, only thing that I can do is that I can change this rate. Oh, you can. Okay, okay. Yeah. So apart from that, I cannot change uh, anything. Like after I load only, I'll be able to do or uh, manipulate this particular rates. But we don't have option to add it manually. So I'll just uh, use this option called create in spreadsheet. So this will uh, download a spreadsheet. And uh, in the spreadsheet, basically we will give the uh, rates. So for our understanding, I'll just uh, create a custom uh, red tape.
Arun? Yeah. Yes, sir. Hello. Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Yeah. yeah. So this is the page that we will have. So what I was doing is that, uh, so I downloaded the sheet and after download, if I click this particular, uh, or if I try to open this particular sheet, so I should uh, log in. Mm. So basically it, it is uh, all, all is based on the uh, role-based access control. So since I have access to this uh, GL manager and the other uh, things, so I'll be able to uh, load this. Uh, so let's say I have access only to the procurement, to the user mm. that I'm trying to log in. So mm. this page will not uh, load actually. So this will be blank. So we will not mm. have uh, even the from currency to currency, all those headings. Mm. So we should have uh, access to our uh, roles. So I, I'm, I have used uh, my login that is uh, Arun 12. So that is the reason I'm seeing all this uh, fields populated. Okay. Okay. So I have logged into it. Uh, so this is the page uh, that I will have. So this is mm. a simple uh, screen where we will enter the from currency and to currency and we will mm. just give the value. Mm. So after completing this, we will uh, click submit. So this mm -hmm. will uh, basically uh, places our data into our base table directly. So from mm -hmm. there, we can view this uh, data. Okay. Last time you said something like on inverse rate, right? What is that inverse rate? Inverse rate is that a reverse effort. Like if, if I wanted to see, let's say Euro to uh, USD. So that, oh, okay, okay, got it. Mm. the rate that uh, we gave so we gave the standard rate as 95 for all this uh, eight eight days mm -hmm. so we are seeing this so let's say i have loaded it by mistake so if i want to edit this so i can edit this mm -hmm. but i'll not be able to change the other information okay. only the uh, rate and the inverse rate will be able to edit okay so so that's it on this part. So now we have uh, the values for our uh, rate. So we will use the corporate rate. So this we uh, actually did it uh, to understand the, uh, to, to load the values uh, in mm. the application. Mm. Uh, since we had already the values loaded for the corporate. Mm. Okay. So I'll just navigate to a uh, journal creation page and uh, we will try to create one foreign currency transaction. Thank you. 
Yeah, so here I have selected uh, the carpet. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I, I can select either the carpet or uh, the oven that we created. So first I'll show with the carpet, then maybe we can select our uh, rate as well. So it will uh, display here. Okay, uh, so, so here uh, we have created uh, the journal entry. So the entry that I have uh, made is that rent to cash account. And uh, the amount that I entered in uh, uh, euro is 10,000. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the after conversion, it is 105.12. Uh, uh, that is in USD. Mm -hmm. So this is based on the uh, conversion that we have uh, given and the inverse uh, conversion rate that system has generated when we are uploading those uh, daily rates. Okay. So this will be uh, the change after uh, we enter our, our currency. So that is for 95. So there will not be much change since uh, we also gave 95 and that is 95.12. So it is on, on zero five point uh, two six. And this is on zero five point one two. So based on the uh, rate, uh, basically this will be changed. So I'll just uh, post this transaction. system. Yeah, we could see that status has changed to post now. Okay, so this is about uh, foreign currency uh, journal entries. And uh, apart from that, uh, we have few other uh, ways of loading or getting the uh, journal entries into the system. Uh, 
So we have a it as a manual way which we created here, and also we have the automated way. So automated way is nothing but through the uh, spreadsheet or the Excel sheet. So mm. this we have our uh, two options. So one is to use it as an FBDA. So this will be kind of a downloadable or uh, in the existing application. So here we can say that uh, uh, create journal and spreadsheet. So this will uh, download a template. I mean uh, Excel sheet uh, similar to our uh, daily rates. So we will just uh, lo load our values there and we will load it back into the application. So this is one way of loading the journal entries. And uh, the other way is to use the FBDA. The FBDA is nothing but our, uh, that is again uh, Excel based thing, but only difference is that uh, it, it, will, it will accommodate more uh, records compared to AFBDA. Because the AFBDA- What is for that? What are the first one and what is the second one? AFBDA is uh, first one. And uh, second one is FBDA, file-based uh, data input. File-based data input, FBDI. Yeah, this, I mean, this one is AFBDA. And uh, second one is FBDA. What is FBDI? FBDA is something uh, like desktop integrated. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so that is the difference. So basically, we, we will be able to load more values in uh, FBDA. So let's say we have uh, the data migration scenario where we have uh, kind of a lacks of uh, records to be pushed in. Mm -hmm. So. For those cases, we can go for uh, FBDA instead of having AFBDA. So only mm -hmm. thing is that uh, FBDA we should uh, download from the Oracle repository. Mm -hmm. So we cannot take it from application. But whereas FBDA, uh, AFBDA, we can take it from the application. Just from this particular navigation called create a journal and spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. yeah. So first we will see it here. Uh, and after uh, completing this, we will see it uh, in Oracle repository to try to download the template and mm -hmm. we will fill in and we will load it back into the system. Mm -hmm. So I'll just uh, click create journal and spreadsheet. Yeah, so this is the AFBDA for our this thing, uh, journal uh, import. Mm -hmm. So here, uh, what we will do is that we will just give the mandatory information and uh, we will load into application. Mm -hmm. Okay. The single journal, multiple journals. Yes.
there no validation in this is it uh, validation here uh, we have uh, like uh, uh, not a complex validation i would say because it will validate whether uh, the mandatory uh, fields are filled in and uh, the list of values that we are selecting so here okay. they have control because so we will not have a uh, much of an validation here Very but good. whereas in uh, fbda we will have validation when we are importing the transaction so even the even there when we are pushing the transaction from the uh, excel sheet mm. so basically we will not have a uh, much validation but whereas if we, if we try to uh, uh, import or uh, through the interface program so that is when we will have all the validation the mm -hmm. father set is limited like it will uh, validate uh, the fields that is entered and the uh, conversion rate and the other things it will validate yeah so if we have a foreign currency transaction probably we can enter the conversion uh, rate type and the other related information yeah. and if we have uh, the dff uh, configured for uh, this particular uh, ledger so we can specify that as well so the line level uh, dff we can enter it here okay so that's it uh, we entered the mandatory information so that is account code combination currency and the debit and credit value okay and uh, header level we entered the ledger and the period and the accounting date and other information so we are done with our simple journal entry so i'll just say submit and uh, issue with uh, actually the accounting date mm -hmm. so i changed it yeah so this is loader and we could see that rows inserted uh, successfully mm -hmm. so we can navigate back to the application uh, let me copy this uh, journal name yeah so this is basically uh, the uh, accounting period is 13 uh, december which means uh, this is actually the uh, adjusting period so if at all we wanted to do any uh, adjustment entry so that is what uh, the purpose of this particular period so i didn't open this for uh, this period uh, for the transaction so that is the reason our system is uh, saying that accounting period isn't open for the ledger so you can only uh, post journals to the open period
Mm-hmm. We will be able to enter the transaction, but we cannot uh, post it because mm-hmm. when we are creating the uh, ledger, we gave uh, the future enterable as one. So which means in the future enterable period, I can enter the transaction. So that is why system allowed me to import this transaction. But when I post this uh, particular transaction, it gives this particular uh, warning message. Mm-hmm. So now if I open this period, I'll I'll be able to post this entry. So let me uh, navigate back to the period closure and I'll open this period. So we have opened the uh, period. Yeah, so this is our uh, uh, spreadsheet. So I'll, I'll just try to post this uh, particular transaction. So I'll just try to change it.
I think posting is still running. So let me check this. I think this uh, program is taking a uh, longer time than expected, actually. It's OK. Uh, um, let's move on. I got, got the concept. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so next thing that uh, we will see is it, uh, FBDA. So that we can uh, download directly from uh, Google. I mean, this will navigate us to the Oracle repository. Mm -hmm. So this is the uh, template that uh, we will be using that is journal import. So basically this uh, screen will give us for the uh, entire uh, file based data import that we'll be using. So we can see that for assert cache management and the other modules as well. So we will see the other part when we are using the respective modules. 
so for now we will see uh, the journal part of it so i'll just click uh, this one template so this will download an uh, excel sheet so i'll just uh, click the excel sheet this comes with some template data is it yeah this is a uh, template data basically uh, for understanding purpose they will give uh, something around 100 to 200 records for us mm -hmm. so we can just remove those data and uh, we can uh, use our data that we'll be using mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, so we, we need the uh, ledger ready. So I will uh, navigate back to the application and I'll, I'll get the uh, just on. So this is our uh, ledger. So I'll just copy our ledger ID. This segment title now can be renamed to the actual uh, values, is it? Like what those segments represent? Yeah, uh, so this is zero one segment one segment two segment two. But what is that each segment, right? Yeah, uh, so basically, this we will uh, define it when we are uh, uh, designing our chart of accounts. 
Mm. So if we uh, if we see our chart of account configuration, we gave our segment one as an company, segment two as an uh, recall uh, the uh, location. Location. Right. Yeah, and uh, segment three as account and segment four as intercompany. So how system will understand is that uh, we we will give basically the uh, segment uh, level uh, a mapping. So let's say uh, for the account, I have given segment one. So in this case, a segment one will become my account, even though my sequence says that <coughs> uh, uh, sequence says that uh, first one is company. But since I have attached the segment one to uh, accounts, so I should give my accounts in the segment one. So that is how we will fill the data. So we have till 30. So based on our this thing, we will uh, give the uh, uh, do our configuration and uh, respectively we will give the values for it or probably I'll, I'll just uh, show here So here, if you see, so we have uh, given the column name as in segment one for the uh, data company. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's say uh, I have given it for uh, the second one, like the data location. So in the uh, segment one in the Excel sheet, I will fill uh, the location based information. So based on the mapping that we have given uh, in this particular case, that is in, for the column name. Mm -hmm. So we will have uh, the selection from uh, segment one to segment 30. So whichever we have selected here, so we will uh, give those values there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, so before this, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll show this particular setup also, the journal source and uh, journal category. So where we can uh, create our customer custom uh, source and category.
Yeah, so this is our, uh, uh, this is the page where we can create the journal uh, source as a custom one. So here I have just uh, clicked add and I entered the name called Tata Legacy. So the understanding is that uh, we are just trying to import the transaction from the legacy environment. So mm -hmm. I have just given a different uh, combination and uh, here, and uh, here, if you see, we have a few other uh, information like uh, the freeze uh, journal. So freeze journals is nothing but, uh, let's say I have imported this uh, particular JV. So whether I wanted uh, to allow it to edit it or I wanted it to uh, freeze it so that user cannot enter anything. So if I say yes, which means I cannot, I cannot enter anything. So let's say I give a partial. So which means in this case, I'll be able to only correct the records. Like if at tell there is an exception. Like if you see when we are doing this AFB day, so we had a few exceptions. The period is not open. So similar mm -hmm. to that, so whether we'll be allowed to do those changes so that we can specify it here. So mm -hmm. I don't want to freeze it at this point. So I'm just saying no, but we have this options. We can say yes, and we can say partial. Got it. Yeah. And uh, then we have uh, the accounting date rule. So in our case, the same example, the accounting date is not open. So uh, what do we want uh, to have? I mean, how do we want to handle this uh, particular synergy? So whether we wanted to roll date, roll date is nothing but uh, latest open uh, date uh, system will pick it. So let's say the open period is uh, December. So we don't have uh, the adjustment period opened. So system will take 30th of uh, December as an uh, accounting date. When we select the roll date. And uh, when we say, again, phase, so yeah. So when we say roll date, hmm. system will take the latest available open period. Okay. So in our case, it is December 30. So mm -hmm. system will take accounting date as on 30th December, 2020. Okay. Yeah. And uh, we have fail. Fail is nothing but basically system will uh, fail this particular transaction. And a leave alone is something that we can just correct it and uh, we can uh, post it back. Mm -hmm. So I'll just say uh, roll back. And uh, we have a uh, journal uh, import references. So whether we wanted to import the references also. So even though we are not using it, so I'll just uh, enable this. And uh, we have require uh, journal approval. So for mm -hmm. this, if we want to manage the approvals and the other things, we can enable this particular uh, checkbox. Mm -hmm. And uh, import uh, using the key. Uh, so if I enable this particular option, what will happen is that system will uh, use this particular uh, field called source key when I'm uh, importing the journal entries. Okay, this is just for uh, our understanding. So if at all you wanted to say, mm -hmm. yeah, correct. Yeah, so that's it on the journal source. Arun, if there's a good stopping point, let's stop here. Yeah, okay, fine. Okay. I also have to be ready for the day. Yeah, fine, no problem. So we'll, uh, uh, I mean, tomorrow. Uh, uh, tomorrow also, we'll start. I think over the next few days, if you don't mind, I would like to catch up. I was very busy last two weeks. Okay. Yeah, yeah, sure. No problem. So, we'll just... have it, uh, then the same thing, seven o'clock. Okay. I'll let okay. Yeah, yeah, fine. Thank you, Arun. Have yeah, a great day. Thanks. Thanks.